Unique from other Kamov designs is a twin boom tail, which is a bit similar to a design I covered in another video, the Transalvia Air Truck from Australia. This layout was likely selected to facilitate loading from any direction. Whether carrying passengers or chemicals, it had a payload of 900 kilograms, and all this mass was carried right at the center of gravity, below the rotor blades. The KA-26 was powered by twin Vedenev M14s with 325 horsepower. The M14 is not only a reliable design, it's considered the backbone of general aviation in Eastern Bloc countries. You'll find M14s in many act designs, Sukhoi aerobatic planes, and even experimentals. The Kamov required practically full power at all times when in flight. So, in order to keep the radials cool and avoid blowing up, small turbines were installed in the front of the engine. These turbines yield a characteristic whine that makes it sound like a mix between a jet engine and a piston. Plus, they could run on regular automotive gasoline, a huge advantage in remote areas where aviation fuel might be hard to come by. Watching a KA-26 come to life is a sight to behold. As typical with radial engines, on startup it will burn off excess oil, leaving behind a huge white cloud of smoke in its wake. The KA-26 was designed for dirt simple maintenance using readily available tools. Take the engine pods for example. Unlike most helicopters where the engine is buried in the fuselage, the M14 radials are sticking out in the wind, making it easily accessible for mechanics or inspectors. The KA-26 can also be refueled with both engines running, as long as the fueler stays far away from the spinning rotors. The cockpit could carry a crew of two, typically a pilot flying solo or a pilot and mechanic. The bubble-shaped cabin allowed for excellent visibility and was slightly pressurized. Why would you pressurize such a small helicopter? Could it fly to 20,000 feet? Pressurization helped keep all the dirty and toxic chemicals on the outside without leaking on the inside. Oddly, each little cam-off would leave the factory with an overabundance of cockpit instruments, allowing the little chopper to fly in instrument conditions even at night. This was presumably because Kamov designed the helicopter to serve both military and civilian operators. As it was, however, most operators chose to strip down their instrument panel, as it wouldn't be needed for crop dusting. 